Hey, what's going on guys? Mike Iacona here from Mike's Custom Airbrush and Iacona Studios. And um, today I wanna to talk about the two different types of paint that I use uh, according to the surfaces that I paint on um, as far as airbrushing. Uh, definitely get a lot of questions um, about reducing paint. What should I use? What air pressure should I use? What paint should I use? So um, I wanna put this together today and uh, give you a little info to help you answer some of those questions. So. Um, first and foremost, we'll just talk about paint brands. There's two different paint brands I use. One is Create Text, and I use that for all my textile painting, t-shirts, denim jackets, leather, anything that comes with clothing that's gonna be um, washed. Um, I shoot Create Text water-based water acrylic paint. Um, it's one of the best brands out there. You can't go wrong with that. Um, the other type of paint that I use is what they call House of Color. Uh, it's a urethane. Um, Definitely pretty toxic paint. You want to be wearing a mask with this. And I use this for all my automotive work um, as far as, you know, bike work, motorcycle art, uh, helmets, automotive, you know, hoods, tailgates, all types of things like that. Um, so let me talk about um, Create Text first and give you a little bit of input on this. So um, when I'm working on t shirts and fabrics and things like that, I do not, for the most part, reduce my paint. Um, that's a big question people ask, and I'll tell you why. Um, these, these, most of the t-shirts and things, denims and jeans, they're getting washed. Um, you want that paint to last, you know what I mean? Especially for customers. So um, I wanna put all the pigment possible into that shirt um, and heat set that. So when you're reducing the paint, you're really thinning the paint. So I don't wanna put a thin paint on a garment and I can't expect that to hold up long-term. So what I usually do is I, you know, most, most paints are, are pretty much ready to go, but some are gonna be a little bit more thicker than others. You know, I'll notice a lot of fluorescents are a little bit thicker than some of the other transparent paints. But um, regardless is whether you're shooting any of the Createx brands, whether it's opaque, transparent, fluorescent, they're all water-based paints. So um, I don't reduce them for the most part when I'm working on t-shirt stuff. I wanna put my air pressure up to help move that heavier, thick paint out the airbrush to get a consistent line and then I'm heat setting. Um, my only exception is my black and my white. Black you're using all the time to outline, write things. White you're using for accents. They're opaque paints. They're thicker. Opaque meaning they'll cover anything. So I usually use a few drops of 401 to reducer made by Createx in that wicked um, black and, and white. And you only need like four or five drops um, in your jar. I use these. Um, uh, VL three ounce jars. I just have bigger hands. I've always used these, so I'm comfortable with these. So, you know, I might fill up, you know, a, a, a third of paint and put a couple drops in there, and that goes a long way. And it doesn't bother my pigment. So, that's a big question people ask all the time about reducing paints, but I want to be real specific. I, for the most part, do not reduce these paints because I want all that pigment in, to, to go into the shirt. Um, and obviously, I'm heat setting after that. So, um, typically I'm shooting about 60 pounds of pressure when I'm do, do, using these acrylic paints. Like I said, you want a heavy pressure to move that heavy paint. It's thicker. Um, I would always use the uh, analogy of um, if you ever had a really thick milkshake and you're sitting there straining with a vein in your head trying to get that milkshake to come up. It's like you need a lot of force to move that. Um, and that's what I try to explain to people when understanding especially beginners, you know, they have a really thick paint and they're like, oh, I'm having trouble getting it out. Well, maybe push your air pressure up because you need that high air pressure to push that paint. If you have more of a thinner paint and it's really watery, well, obviously you don't need 60 pounds of pressure to move that, it's gonna move real quick. So, um, I love Create Text. I've been shooting it pretty much my whole career. Um, and they're amazing paints, they're durable. Um, you can use these on all surfaces. And I know a lot of amazing artists that use these for all surfaces. For me, I just, they're not as user friendly for me when I'm working on automotive. Um, I just, you know, I'm using thinner stuff with the urethanes on automotive. I like being able to tape over my projects right away. And with urethanes, I have a lot more advantages, I would say. Now again, I haven't really experimented in the last five, 10 years with all these paints and crossing over, I will admit. They do have base clears and different things like that you could put over these. Um, Createx actually makes an automotive brand, um, which is great, but I've always used House of Color. It's just, I'm one of those old school artists. So like, you know, some of the guys back in the day used to shoot lacquers when I got into it in, you know, very early 90s. Um, everything was turning over the urethanes for automotive work. So 
I strictly keep these just for my textiles, my t-shirts, my fabrics. Once in a while, if I have a sign to do and it's wood, you know, I, you could use these, these are great on wood. Um, but for the most part, reducing when you're painting on t-shirts, I do not reduce, um, except for my black and white. Um, if you are having problems shooting this paint coming out of your airbrush, if you look up here at this little sample board, um, if you see what I have here and if you get close, it's almost like a stipple effect. So if you have really thick paint and you don't have enough air pressure, this is what you're going to get because it just can't move that paint. So it's kind of just kind of spluttering it out and you'll see it's not smooth at all. I up my air pressure with that thing, that uh, thick paint and you see how smooth my soft line is and you'll see how smooth my hard lines are. You don't see all that, you know, uh, roughness around it because it's able to move that thick paint with a high pressure. Um, so a lot of you have, you know, you're troubleshooting. A lot of people, beginners have trouble with paint coming out and I'll tell them, I bet it's air pressure. So even if you had a really thick paint, if you crank your air pressure up, usually you can move from something like that to something like that. And that's not a problem. You don't always have to reduce, but um, a lot of people wanted to know what I do. So yeah, when I'm working on t-shirts and stuff like that and you want that paint to be durable, I pretty much go straight pigment aside from my black and my white few drops. Um, if you look at a piece over here, I'm starting. Um, I'm also using Createx on here. This is just Strathmore paper. Um, even if I'm working on canvas, um, this is a deco piece I'm getting ready to do. And it's just for me. So this is when I will reduce these paints. And I'll tell you why. I don't have to worry about durability for because I'm not washing anything. So paints are definitely a little bit more user friendly when you do thin them. But again, when I talk about not thinning them, I'm not doing like portraits and things like that on my t-shirts anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been in the game for a while and there's not a lot of things that I still offer on t-shirt work. So I'm pretty much doing like name designs and cartoons. So I don't need to go crazy with my, my paints with that. Um, when I'm working on a detail piece here, when I'm done, it's going to be, you know, a lot of highlights, a lot of, a little bit more realism. Um, my, when you can work with thinner paints, you can kind of layer them. Like when you shoot red, you're not getting red right away. You might get like a pinkish and then you're putting another stroke and you're getting it more and more. I like building up my layers. It's kind of like when I'm working with urethanes, you can build that up. Um, so this is where an exception where I do thin my paints. Absolutely. Um, even for my outline here, I mixed up some dark blue, some dark brown, um, some dark green, a few drops of black. Um, and I labeled it reduce. So pretty much I reduce 50, 50. So it's, if it's 50% pigment, meaning straight paint, I'll put 50% reducer in there, or you can cut it with water. They're water-based paints. So again, I'm not worried about wash fads. I'm just worried about getting clean lines. So I like being able to lower my air pressure to maybe 20 pounds because this stuff is like water now and really getting thin lines. And man, um, it's just so much more fun to work with. Um, when you, you could take your time and build these things up. And I'll show you this in another video when I'm done, and I'll probably do a video on this, but um, there are exceptions when I thin this paint, but it's not when I know I, um, I'm gonna want that art project to be, um, when I know they're washing it, like I said, t-shirt material, denim, anything like that, Carhartt, um, you wanna use straight pigment because you know they're, they're gonna take some abuse. So when I'm working on anything but t-shirts, I definitely do like to reduce and it's nothing crazy, 50-50. 50% pigment, 50% water, or 50% pigment, 50% reducer, if you're using Createx. That's what I do, guys. Um, and then when you go to spray, if you notice you're getting some sputtering, put a little bit more reducer in. If you're working on a sub, uh, uh, on something that doesn't have to be washed. You know, um, you can actually do 40% pigment to 60% water or reducer, and you can keep thin it, thinning it to get your consistency. But um, that's a, that's like a feel thing. So I can give you this information, but you, you got to go through it for a little, a couple times and get a feel and an understanding when you're spraying that. So, um, just a quick review when we're working with textiles, t-shirts and denims and, and things like that, I'm shooting straight Createx, most pretty much all pigment. When I still using Createx and I'm working on like paper and canvas, you definitely are able to thin those paints, um, and, and make them a little bit more user friendly for you. So. Um, hopefully that covered a little bit of that because I get a lot of questions on reducing. Um, second, we'll jump to the urethanes. Um, House of Color has been around forever. All the custom painters when I was growing up, I mean, 
everybody was shooting House of Color. You know, after Lacquers left, which I wasn't even around then, urethanes became unbelievable because you can paint something, let it dry in five, 10 minutes, tape over it, paint again. You could just, as a custom painter, you can just keep going with your project. Um, I love that aspect because when you're doing things as a business, time is money and you want to put all your energy and time into making that piece great. Um, and you also want to look at the time. So I love urethanes and the only thing about them that I have to say suck is you got to put a mask on. You want to be in a controlled environment where you have some airflow, a downdraft booth or a fan. If you're working in your garage, set up a fan, but I'm usually working in a booth when I'm working with automotive. Um, so, you know, it's, you gotta get used to having that mask on because if you ever walked into a nail salon, um, you know, it, it smells like, ugh, and your eyes almost burn. Your things are not healthy for you, but they're the most durable paint out there. And it's a base coat, clear coat system. So when I'm working on a hood for a car, or a tailgate or a motorcycle tank, um, we're doing the airbrush work, painting, and then we're clear coating over it. So it's a base coat, clear coat. So I will never go away from House of Color because if it ain't fixed, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I've always just, excuse me, I've always just um, used them and they're amazing. I love the, the, the palette they offer. You can buy it in small amounts like I have here. Um, so you can spend a few bucks. You don't have to buy these. I'm, I'm moving a lot of t-shirt paint, so I buy these 32 ounces, but you can buy small amounts of, um, this is a candy. Um, it's like a two ounce, they have four ounce. Um, and when it comes to reducing that those paints, you definitely have to reduce all those paints. You are not taking a base coat urethane, which is really thick, and pouring it into a jar and painting automotive. You will definitely get this, okay? You don't want, you know, uh, dirty lines like that, especially when you're working on high-end pieces. You're definitely thinning this paint. So whether you're using um, a base coat or more of a transparent color from House of Color. They all have reducers. So um, in my climate here, where we are, I'm in, you know, East Coast, um, we're in Jersey, temperature's up and down a little bit. I, whoops, that's the um, wrong one. I use the um, RU311 medium reducer. So just like the other reducers for um, Createx, basically I'm doing 50-50, 50% pigment to 50% reducer. And then, you're shooting a lot less air pressure with these paints because these are more like water paints after you reduce them. So um, you can lower your pressure down. And again, that's trial and error. You guys need to get that in your hand and, and reduce a little bit of paint and get a feel, pull some lines for a half hour, and, and then you'll get that feel. And then you're gonna learn on your own and you're gonna get it after you do a couple. It's just trial and error. But a lot of people are clueless. They have no clue. They're like, hey, can I buy this paint at Hobby Lobby? Can I do this? Can I do that? Um, Listen, try anything because, you know, you're going to learn from it. But for the most part, when I'm using uh, urethanes and I'm working on a bike or a car, um, I'm always, you know, metals and stuff like that. I'm always shooting House of Color and I'm always reducing that paint. I'm typically shooting about 20 pounds of pressure when I'm using urethane because it's like water and I'm really layering my stuff on there. Again, these projects are a lot more higher end. I'm not just doing, you know, a black outline of, you know, uh, I don't know, a basketball and coloring it in orange like I would on a shirt. Um, you're doing more high-end work, so you, your your air pressure's low, you're taking your time and you're building that up. So, um, I hope that helped as far as a little bit as far as talking about reducing. Um, and air pressure, I wanted to mention because I think a lot of people, you know, it definitely goes hand in hand. Reducing your paints and the thicknesses and also the pressure that's moving that paint, they go hand in hand. So. Um, here's a couple lines, like I said, I pulled with on a t-shirt with that Wicked, um, and you see how like I can get pretty thin lines, everything's pretty clean, I went thick and thin a couple times, and you know, it, it looks great, but um, if you know you're working on canvas, and you're working on paper and things like that, reduce your paint, you know what I mean, trial and error. 50-50, um, it's, it's nothing crazy, and if you've noticed, hey, I'm still getting some sputtering, we'll pull your air pressure up, or maybe put a couple more drops of reducer in. But um, I wanna give a shout out to Coast Airbrush. I've been using them for a while. Um, they've been around for a while. Um, most of the top guys in the U in the US, um, 
there's there's great guys out there, man, that are that are, that are online a lot more than me. I'm just getting online now to, to share some of my stuff. I feel like I'm a veteran in airbrush. I've been around 30 years. I've done it all. So I want to give something back. But like um, Coast Airbrush, man, I don't care if you're a beginner, you're you're an advanced. Everybody goes to them. They're out of California. You can you can definitely gain some knowledge from them. Call them up, ask them some questions. But this is where I get all my products. So you can definitely check them out. Um, also, before I end this video, I want to say uh, we broke 100 subscribers. So I want to thank you guys for um, for checking me out. And, and we're going to get better with these videos. And I I'm, I'm constantly want to pop in and out. And um, we, we got pretty busy the last month or two with the commission. So I haven't been able to post. But um, um, stay tuned. Subscribe. If you know somebody who's into art or, or, um, or wants to learn some stuff, definitely uh, steer them to my channel. I appreciate that. Um, and in the meantime, uh, look forward to some more videos coming up. I got a lot of content I've been laying down, mapping out. So um, any other questions, please leave it in the comments if I left something out. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to get that basic um, info to you guys within a video, but sometimes I might um, miss something. So feel free to drop something in the comments and I'll definitely get back to you. Um, and in the meantime, guys, I appreciate you. Thanks and uh, I'll see you next time.